apologize. I, I sort of have some cryptic notes that I took back. And I don't really want to, I don't have a specific comment. Rather, I have some observations um, from this meeting and, and just in general. And I'd like to start by saying I am not um, adequately or, or even basically opposed to any of the, whatever you want to call it, reform math, everyday math, or whatever it might be. Uh, in fact, I had a conversation with the director of the Hayden Planetarium, who is one of the, probably the foremost, if it's not the top, maybe the top three astrophysicists in the world yeah, today. Yeah. And I asked him, given what was going on here, what he thought about reform math and so forth. And he was actually very much enthusiastically in favor of it as a, um, a means to help children think creatively and, and out of the box. However, he also noted that he didn't think it was appropriate at very young ages, because he felt it was important for young children in elementary school to have the foundation of, frankly, some of the traditional road uh, fundamental uh, building blocks upon which you can build more creative thought. So um, take that as you will. You know, it's a, I, I think that's to me that was sort of a telling comment, and I, and I have noticed it with my young children. Um, the some of the the work that comes home. Quite honestly, I, I understand the, the idea behind it to create um, uh, problem-solving skills and so forth. But frankly, it's some of it is uh, extremely inefficient ways. To, I mean, there are lots of ways to solve a problem. I have to disagree with one comment. There is only one right answer in mathematics. There isn't. There aren't several answers. There are several ways to get to an answer, and and I think that's an important distinction. The other thing I, I like to say is, um, I, I wonder whether. We're trying to put too much responsibility on the math program. I was a, uh, um, and, and I don't know that, that the tools that children need have changed really that much. Uh, for me, like uh, Mr. Rossini, math came pretty easily. And I, 30, 35 years ago, was taking algebra in eighth grade. Um, I went on to be a history and English major in college, but then was hired in a company which was dominated by engineers where I had to take postgraduate cal uh, calculus and physics. Uh, just to get the job, and I now work in finance. So I, I you know, don't have a problem with math, but I have to tell you that, that the way that those problems are solved, or, or some of the methodology, is not how math is done in business today. And one thing that I would caution you about is I wonder how many, excluding the board members, how many of the people here have any experience outside of academia? And, and I don't, that's not a criticism. But I think the risk that you run is that you get sort of groupthink. And you, you maybe don't have the exposure to what's happening beyond. And, and I have the deepest respect for educators. I don't mean to be critical of how you're doing things or, or what your experience is. I'm just suggesting that the real world applications of what you're teaching our kids is not always, um, it's sometimes different than what it appears to be in the, in, through the educational process. It's just been my personal experience. Um, I thought it was very interesting. Um, is uh, Lenning, Lenninger, is that what you uh, Talked about reading the world is flat. The, my business today is dominated, uh, or at least in the quantitative thinkers in our business, are dominated, uh, I don't want to be politically incorrect, but generally by people who are educated in India and Asia. Uh, and it's, what was interesting about your comment is in India, they don't teach, in fact, throughout most of Asia, they don't teach reform math as a format. I know in India, it's in fact, they're taught not to question. It's really rote memorization is how they learn. Now, I'm not saying that's a good thing, but I think it's interesting that some of the best mathematicians we have today are coming from that background. Um, they may not be the most creative thinkers. They may be thinking in a more regimented, disciplined style, but I think, um, you know, I, a school curriculum is based on multiple disciplines. And for example, law requires critical and analytical thinking. That doesn't come from math. That comes from being a critical thinker and, think, and having independent thought, being able to, to dig deeper and question what your you know, understanding is of a subject matter. Math is helpful in that. But I think it's just as important for history and English teachers and science teachers particularly to be able to teach those disciplines. And so, coming back to my comment, I'm wondering whether we're really expecting too much of the math program, right? Um, so. Uh, Mr. Mali, I'm sorry, the yeah, timer okay. broke, so you, 
I mean, if you just want to wrap it up, I, I, I'll, give you, I'll give you another 30 seconds just no, I'm to wrap sorry, it up. I, I just I apologize because I was writing these down in no particular order. Um, oh, and, you know, Mark, you made a great point. Um, the, and, and I think it, uh, you were talking about Mr. Mueller. One of the reasons that I found math uh, interesting was it was entertaining. The teachers I had were great. They, they really engaged and, and made it. <laughs> okay, that's the end of the point. <laughs> so but my point is, it's not, it's not really about the curriculum. It's about the teachers. And I think that's actually part of the problem is that some people question whether our teachers are well-trained enough to teach what you're trying to teach. So I just keep that thought in mind as well. But I think it really does come down to the teachers teaching. And you can teach traditional math subject. I, mean, I never took a reform math course. <coughs> But, um, but I got math, and I understood it, and it was fun for me. And I think that's because of the teachers that talk. Uh, I think maybe a solution might be to think about a blended curriculum. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe, and frankly, maybe it's not based on reform math. Maybe that's the supplement. I, mean, uh, I don't want to get any teachers in, in trouble, but I've spoken with some of my students' teachers, and they actually feel there are deficiencies in what they're teaching. And so at every chance they have, they're supplementing it with traditional math problems. Right. And to tell you the truth, that's what I've done as a teacher for 20 odd years. That's what, te that's yeah. what a good teacher Not does. Because there's no one program <laughs> that does what you want it to do yeah. at any given time. So that's what a good teacher has to be able to do to be a good teacher. Thank you. Thanks, Barry.